Hey guys, it's Rebecca Oberstat. In today's video, we are playing Lost Oasis. Now, for some reason, I only recorded about two hours of gameplay on this game um, before the game had a hiccup and the recording software just up and stopped and I forgot to turn it back on. So this is the character creation. Um, I watched a video from the Lazy Peon and I will leave his video linked down below playing this game and I thought it looked interesting and Jason bought it for me for Valentine's Day so we got to play this together. Uh, these are all the different like presets. This is basically a nomadic type game where um, there's very few like customer yeah customization options which I, I really don't care about that I just want to make my character look as least ugly as possible so um, yeah and all the hairstyles have some sort of bed head or dreads or like caveman esque type hair you should see what Jason has on his head and it took us a bit and we were talking through the blizzard um, app like the blizzard launcher so i don't think any of our sound recordings from us like talking back and forth recorded i think it was just the gameplay that got recorded so i am just going through the things and now we're going to start so i'm gonna let the game do some talking and it takes forever for this game to load in like absolutely forever for each of the scenes to load for the game to load it takes like 15 minutes for the game to load i have no idea why it's so slow yeah, so here we go. You have spent your entire life following the flood, and now you have made it. You will be taken to a in the wastes, survive and return to me. I have more to tell you. So a lot of this is sped up times two. I have detached the audio that was from the game and I've tried to clear it up as best as I can. But um, you saw you saw Jason add me to a clan so he can find me and then just looking at the map, learning the controls for the game, learning what you know right click and left click does, that kind of thing, jump, which is the space bar, and you know what some of the game options are. So that's basically what I'm doing going through. And of course, if you look on the left hand side of my screen, there is a um, there's something there that tells me, you know, what I have to do, what I have to build. And I'm just talking, I was talking with Jason for a minute. So it basically says go and, and harvest stuff. You can only carry so much in this game before you're weighed down. And if you carry too much weight, you literally stop moving. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up a little bit more. So you guys um, do not have to sit through an hour long video. Show the cactus when you cannot find water. The test is not so sweet. More like a bum rack. If you look off into the distance, you see what looks like a monkey. And by the way, I was not close enough to hit that at first until I realized I was too far away. Um, avoid the monkeys at first. So if you do want to play this game, they, they can be quite mean. So there's that. You will find all the knowledge on your journey. Bring it with you. The sand has swallowed many treasures. Some of these parts I'm speeding up times three. Um, the sand bed is what you make in order to like sleep and rest and recover. And if you get knocked out, that's where you respawn. 
um, until you build your first walker. That's how you get around the desert is by using a walker. I'm in a starting area. And if you notice, Jason's name is off to the side. See, see there, it's, it, it shows up every now and again when I turn around. I'm just running around picking up everything I can, avoiding the monkeys. And then we find this cute little guy. I'm like, what the hell do I do with him? Whack, whack, bump, whack, bump. Um, okay, I killed it. Now what? And it says you have to attack it. In order to attack it to get hide, you have to move your mouse up and down in order to get it. But, you know, it took me a bit to figure that crap out. So there's that. And you'll find like loot chests and boxes and stuff various places. Um, and you're only, some of these you collect once and then they disappear. Because I'm in a starting area, um, they don't disappear. They just kind of stay there. But it teaches you how to build all this stuff. And I'm just trying to figure out all the different like menus and crafting and that kind of stuff. We are surrounded by wastes. One side of the earth is hot and barren. The other side is dark and covered in ice. The wilds are overrun with savages called Rupu. They watch you from the brush. In the game, they have these Ruku things that are like little monkey creatures. Jason and I just refer to them as monkeys. That's what they look like to us. Little little mean monkeys with anger issues. Um, and they can kill you. And the bad part about these is you can also um, attack each other on accident uh, when we're attacking the monkeys. Uh, we end up hitting each other. and We've knocked each other out more than once doing it. The Rupu are envious creatures, and their minds swim with toxins, making them cruel. <coughs> Rupu once surrounded me on the Black Hills. They danced and ate the flesh of my companions, guzzling their psychedelic brew. of life in the waste called the oasis. A mysterious energy flows through the soil. In the oasis, plants spill over the sand where nothing is meant to grow. I have seen immense trees shoot up after a single rainfall. Since Jason had started this game before me, he's a little bit further ahead of me than I am. Um, so basically you just go through and you gather wood and fiber, which you get from bushes and rocks, and you're going to need a whole lot of aloe. Um, or not aloe, the, um, the cactus, and there he is running by me, and now I'm learning how to make a cook stove, and I'm just, you know, I'm trying to speed this up so you can see everything I did without making it excruciatingly boring, um, but I don't like to cut out a whole lot because I want you to see everything I went through. In the wastes, water can be more precious than worm seed. A stranded merchant traded me all his possessions for a bottle. So I couldn't figure out how to get the water out of the cook stove and into the little water bottles that I had made. Um, it took me a minute to figure it out. And of course I had to ask Jason, I'm like, what am I doing wrong? So basically you can double click things in your bag and put them in the stove. And what that does is it, um, you know, will but you know add it to the your cook stove and then you can shift click or control click depending on um how many that you want to um you know to to get in there like how many that you want uh 
how many different stacks that you want to make. And here I'm just, I'm the queen of harvesting. That's one of the things that I actually like doing in some of these types of games. I'm not real fond of uh, survival games, but I'm figuring out. And when it's on that side of the map, you just double click it and it puts it in your bag. Um, I don't know why I didn't figure that out. I, here I'm trying to drop and drag it and it takes me a minute, okay? And then of course, if you leave wood in the stove, it just burns it up and turns into dash. The flotilla is our last walking city, the center of the nomadic world. For those who do not ride the walker, it is the only refuge. Okay, so, so since this is a starting area where I'm at, you're learning all of your like basic things. So let's go over those really quick. On the left hand bottom, there's like three little moon symbols, which they have now changed to triangles. The blue is your water, the green is your stamina, and the red is your health. Um, then you have slot one and slot two, which are your two weapons that you have like equipped at all times. And then you have the other slots next to those on the bottom of the screen, which you can put things like bandages, other weapons, anything that you have in your bag that you want to be able to switch to quickly, those go there. Um, just gathering a whole bunch of things before I even build my walker and the reason you need to build a walker is because you need to be able to get around the desert and walking is not ideal. If you return to the flotilla, you must ride the walker. It is written in the scrolls. So, I want to talk about the tech tree, which is this. Um, you need fragments to unlock each of the different things that you unlock. And you pick those up by, like, killing Rupu and by unlocking, like, chests and stuff. Um, and some of the other occasionally you'll find like bags hanging that you can get those from and then of course later on you end up needing um fry, like the shards but i'll have to do that in another video now um i'm in the middle of building my walker of uh, you need a ton of resources to build your walker which is why you see me running around grabbing as many things as i can because you have to be able to make certain things for the walker and the bushes give you fiber jason's already got his built um he built one before he even got over here to where i'm at because he started in a different area and each each of the different things are lit up and you have to do them in a specific order so what's yellow is what i need to build next and you have to constantly like move around this little guy in order to get it um, built so my first walker is built. You have to use your tech tree to unlock each of these little components and parts and stuff. Like you unlock your walker and then your legs and then later you unlock your wings. Gather as much as you can. After I built the walkers, because there can be no rest. Keep only what you need. Abandon everything that cannot be carried. So now that the walker is built, you have to put your cook stove and stuff on it because of course you take that with you because if not, you have no way to make water. And you can always, you know, make another cook stove if you need to. It doesn't take a whole lot of resources to do that. But just make sure you gather as many resources as you can and you want to leave the starting area as close to level 10, 20 as possible, but not after level 20. So I go and I explore the entire area. I build a bunch of things. I learn to make as many things as I can with the fragments that I have. And here I am um, packing things and putting it on um, my, you know, my walker. I have received visions too. I have seen nations settle on the floor of the earth. And when I looked up, the moon was whole. So I'm gonna probably end up leaving this right about here. Um, 
when you get into your tech tree, you want to make sure that anything that's like white like that, you those are things that you can unlock. You really want to unlock your walker first, your tools like your weapons, um, building tools like your hatchet and um, things like that. You want to unlock bandages and later you'll unlock potions and stuff. But only unlock the things right now that you need to get out of this oasis and build up better weapons and stuff like your hatchet is your biggest thing that you need um and like a beater stick or something that you can use to defend yourself those are the main concerns with getting this started i think i'm going to go ahead and leave this here um and cut this part and make this part one i will go into part two with what is still the rest of what's recorded because there was um two hours of footage that i had filmed and then i ended up um cutting a lot of this down to speeding it up so that you'll see me moving at like a rapid pace a lot of this is two times some of it's four times but this will give you like a start where you set up like how to go about these things, attacking things. Um, you know, you can use your left mouse button to block. You use your right mouse button to, um, you know, click to attack. Using your mouse in different variations, whether it's up, down, side to side, um, also depends on how you swing at things. But again, gather as much as you can leave the the area before you're level 20 and um yeah kill as many rupu as you can but be careful try not to take on more than you're able to at one time and ask for help if you need it i am rebecca oberstadt this has been my initial first playthrough and setup and getting started on lost oasis i will leave the game link down below it was one that uh, jason bought me off of steam i will also leave the lazy peons videos linked down below as well that he did on this um that i watched i was like oh that looks neat i never played like monster hunters or anything like that i'm not really big into survival games i'm really just an mmo person at heart um, but this looked interesting and so I decided I would play it and playing it with Jason is fun. You have to be careful that there are clans once you get to the actual regular maps that pe people will attack you and steal your stuff. So just keep that in mind. Um, everything is fair game. You can attack each other in this game and kill each other. Uh, so you have to be careful with that as well. But just play, have fun, um, learn as you go. If you have questions, you can leave them down below. I will try and answer them as best I can. If I can't answer them, then you'll get a reply from Jason because um, he also watches the videos and whatnot. He was there with me and he knows a little bit more about this game than I do. This is just my initial playthrough, just some fun. This was the Valentine's Day gift that he got me besides the beautiful flowers and I appreciate it. So let me know what you guys think down below. Leave your questions down below and I will see you in part two. Have a fantastic day or night wherever you are and happy gaming.